Hello, my friends. Welcome to another edition of Rollin' Rambles. I'm your host, Jody Bruchon, and today we're going to have a discussion where I don't keep talking like that. Today we're going to talk about security, but we're not going to talk about security as in install an antivirus, uh, or make sure that your Windows firewall is turned on, or, you know, use IP tables to exclude by default. You know, all that stuff that everybody talks about. Today we're going to talk about actual security. We're going to talk about threat models, and we're going to talk about, well, are you making big mistakes with your security? First of all, we need to talk about what security is, because here's the nasty truth. A computer is a tool. A computer is something that you use to get work done. When you get that work done with your computer, I'm just checking my mic levels, I think they need to go up. When you, when you use your computer to do work, uh, that computer is no different than a very elaborate hammer or chainsaw or uh, Lego brick separator. It's just a tool, it's all just tools. It's things that you use to accomplish a certain goal. There is no point in computers existing if they do not accomplish goals, if they do not do work that you need done. You use a hammer to hit nails into a board. A lock can lock people out. A lock can lock people in. A lock can lock you out. Just as much as a lock could lock you in or lock others out or lock others in. So these tools inherently do not have any good or evil to them. What is good or evil is how they are used. When we discuss computer security, and more specifically when we're talking about threats, what we really mean by that is that your computer is being used in a way that you don't want it to be used. You want your computer to be secure, which means you want it to do what you want and not do what other people that aren't you want. You want it to perform certain tasks that you've designated as good, and you don't want it to perform other tasks which could harm you. You want the computer to store your documents and not lose them. You don't want your computer to take your documents and send them to a scammer in Pakistan. <laughs> this is kind of the thesis of computer security, really is that you just don't want it to do stuff that hurts you. You want it to do stuff that helps you, and it's just a tool. And really, it comes down to who's swinging the hammer. So what you have to do to understand security is to understand what it really is. Who's controlling the tool and how? It's possible that you're controlling the hammer, but someone manages to trick you into thinking that your thumbnail is the nail that needs to be hit. This would be when you're browsing the internet, a malicious ad served up through an ad network, something that happens all of the time. Important security message. Your computer has been locked up. Your IP address was used without your knowledge or... Which is why you need uBlock Origin in your browser to block ads. A malicious ad served up through an ad network kicks you over to a, uh, a scammer website that fakes some kind of computer virus sort of thing, beeps at you, talks to you, looks like a convincing Microsoft security thing, warning your computer is infected with virus and it is infecting Microsoft server, that kind of thing. And people call the phone number that appears because they have been tricked into thinking there is actually a, a serious problem and that calling the phone number will relieve it. Fear causes them to shut down the rational centers of their brain. They just want the thing that's scaring them to go away, so they call the phone number. Well, this is equivalent to having that, that trickery and getting you to whack your thumbnail, except instead now you've let a scammer probably in uh, Pakistan or India or somewhere else like that where there's call centers full of hundreds of people being paid practically slave wages um, to rip off your grandma's bank account. Yeah, now you've given someone remote access to your computer, which means they can copy your documents, including that password file in plain text that you keep on your desktop for some reason. They can install software on your computer. Doesn't even have to be software that runs at the system level. They can install software that's malicious that only runs under a local limited user account, which requires no privilege escalation. 
And none of this, that, that's the big thing that I really want to hit here, is that most of the threats in modern security for normal people, most of those threats are not technical threats. They are threats that target the person sitting behind that keyboard. The person operating the device is the one who is targeted. Because if they can't easily attack your computer, if they can't easily convince you to download an executable and run it because, you know, there's antivirus software, Windows Defender smart screen, um, there's, there's all kinds of different protection layers. Any given person that has an antivirus in a modern browser has at least two layers of protection against running something malicious. The browsers tend to have a list of known bad things um, and the uh, Windows Defender smart screen or whatever other security software you're running tends to also have a list of bad things or, and sometimes even operates on a whitelist sort of system where it only lets you run things without prompting that a lot of other people run or download things a lot of other people download so that you know that it's probably safe because a lot of other people are continuing to use it. It's sort of a reputation-based scoring system. But anyway, these things, they, they, they can target you using legitimate tools. Ultra Viewer, Team Viewer, Screen Connect, um, VNC, although I've never seen one use VNC, um, maybe even Remote Desktop. But they can use legitimate tools that any IT guy would use to help you remotely to get you to let them on your computer and let them screw up your computer. You basically grant them the same privileges you have at the keyboard if you use these tools to let them remotely use your computer as if they are sitting at it. Uh, and that's the thing is if, if we're talking about legitimate everything, <clears throat> you, the user, the person in full control of the computer, chose to call the phone number, chose to believe the person on the other end, chose to download and install a commonly used piece of remote access software, chose to enter the code that grants them access to it. In all of these cases, legitimate software was used and user choices were made. None of those can be caught by antivirus software of any sort because it's all legitimate. It was your choice and you did it on purpose. And if they were to like blacklist TeamViewer, UltraView, whatever, uh, oh, AnyDesk is another one. But if they were to blacklist these things, then IT guys, including potentially their own people at their own call centers to help with your the paid product, you're paying them for um, to use and to have support for, may not be able to remotely access the computer. If they blacklist the remote tools they use to help you, the scammers use the same tools. So the threat model there, it, it has nothing to do with updating Windows. It has nothing to do with updating your browser. It, it has nothing to do with OpenSSH's latest vulnerability. It has nothing to do with a secure shell hole that's caused by um, LibLZMA or whatever. It's none of that. It, none of that matters to a normal, average, everyday human being. The truth is most of you are not very big targets. You're not that important. The CIA is not coming after you. Although, how do I know that? If they can't get you, they'll go to someone more gullible and try to get them. For normies, it's a numbers game. And the numbers go way up if they use legit software and trick you into doing what seems legit and take actions that technically are not illegal, which is why a lot of these scammers don't actually leave malicious software behind. They'll sometimes leave a calling card and leave remote software that you can't just remove, but that can still be deleted pretty easily by someone like me. But most of the time, I don't see scammers leave any malicious stuff on the computer. They leave a note and they try to get you to call them if you have any other computer problems. And they'll call you back periodically. And it, it all on the surface looks like it's some kind of, um, you know, your computer had a problem, you called a tech support agent, they gave you tech support, you paid money for computer tech support. It all looks legit. Uh, oh, well, no, no, it was a scam. I got scammed. Well, no, you, you, you called them willingly and you gave them the money. It was your choice to give them the money. So you had, no, it, it doesn't seem like a law was broken. This is a civil matter. We're done. And police walk out and you get no help. I mean, that, that's pretty much how that goes. 
now that it's not a criminal matter and is just a civil matter, that means that the FBI and such are not exactly going to be trying to go set up some international task force in Pakistan to, to go and take down the call center. Because they're not scamming Americans, they're just performing technical support services of dubious value. But that's not a scam, that's a dispute. A civil dispute, not criminal. <clears throat> so there's your threat model. From normies, it's largely scams. Now, that does not mean that downloading a random exe file and running it is not dangerous. That does not mean that if you just download some program from somewhere that you're not exposed to some sort of risk. Yes, there is risk. There, there will always be risk. But most people have a lot of safeguards in place by default at this point that prevent them from simply downloading an executable and having no idea that it might be a bad thing. If you download an executable in Firefox, it'll warn you that, oh, th th this is a program and it might, be, it might be harmful to your computer. And then you run it and it's like, do you want to give this, this program full access to your computer? Uh, you know, do you, do you really want to give it escalated privileges? And there's just all these questions that are like, no, don't do it. No, don't do it. No, don't do it. No, don't do it. Some people will go through with it anyway. But for a lot of people, they'll just second guess it and be like, eh, maybe not. Uh, Windows Defender Smart Screen may say, oh, you're not allowed to run this. This, is, this might be malicious. So we're just not going to let you run it just to be safe. So that threat is largely gone. The whole download random exe and end up with a copy of XP Antivirus 2008, the fake antivirus that does absolutely nothing, but definitely tries to get you to call the phone number and give them money to activate it to clean it up. Yeah, we are long past those days. Uh, the chances of anybody performing a technical attack on your home computer are extremely slim. Now, if your home computer is directly connected to the internet instead of behind a NAT router, Eh, it might be a little bit different. Now, any system on the internet can bombard that system with all the attacks that they can muster. And if, if they catch one that's a known vulnerability and you're not patched against it, yeah, maybe they can get you. But if you're behind a NAT router, the NAT router doesn't know where to send the attack and it drops it. So now it's just the router that you have to worry about. And, and yeah, unpatched router firmware is a big danger. Fortunately, it's not all that common that router firmware is found to have some sort of serious bug. Uh, most router firmware, by the nature of a router, it is an embedded system with very limited flash, uh, flash memory storage and RAM. So by the nature of a router, you have a tendency to strip most of, if the, the, most of the stuff from the system that is not necessary to perform the task of routing. So when they build the kernels for your router, when they build the software for your router, they're turning off features. They're removing entire chunks of the Linux kernel there or, or whatever, VXWorks, you know, whatever OS it happens to run. They're not compiling a whole bunch of what you would consider standard utilities. Like uh, you may not have, if you have a Linux based router and you're able to secure shell into it or telnet into it or whatever, there may not be uh, the top command, for example. There may not be the PS command to see what's running. There may be absolutely none of that on the router. And, and that's, that's a big deal. Because if the command isn't there, then even if they breach the router on some level, that code isn't present for them to run. They would have to be able to send code somewhere to run it. You know, it, it, the attack surface is minimized because the router does not have most of the stuff that could potentially be vulnerable in the first place. Uh, and, and even the secure shell library, uh, there's a tendency to use a lightweight SSL library instead of OpenSSL. There's a tendency to use DropBear instead of OpenSSH because they're huge by comparison. You're not often going to find home routers with big vulnerabilities. Now, yeah, they exist, it happens, uh, unpatched firmware, basically means big unknown possible holes that will never be fixed. Is the boat going to go down because of those holes? Maybe. Maybe not. I, I don't know. Router firmware updates, eh, unless there's some sort of security hole that you really need to patch against, probably not that big of a deal. For normal people, 
uh, getting port scanned and port and all that stuff, it's just not a thing anymore. You know, nobody's doing a doing a, a TCP SYN scan on your home computer behind your router. That's just not happening. The scammers are the biggest threat. The scammers manage to get their things to pop up on your computer through malicious ads that run JavaScript that redirect you to their website. And that means, what? That's right, ad blockers are actually more important than antiviruses. In fact, if I had to choose between antivirus software and ad blocking in my browser, I would keep uBlock Origin over the antivirus every single time. In fact, I don't use any antivirus software on my computers. I take the speed boost and I take the speed hit that an ad blocker puts in my browser and I think that's a pretty fair compromise. All my other stuff runs faster. My browser might be a little slower, but guess what? No scams, no weird malicious redirects, none of it. So I, I feel pretty good about that. That's the thing with security. Would you ever think that an ad blocker was a more imp important piece of security software than an actual security suite? Now, if you're a corporation, a big corporation especially, you are a bigger target. Not only are you a bigger target with a lot more to lose, but you have a whole lot more points of entry because you have a whole lot more computers, a whole lot more people, and the more people you have working at your company, the more likely it is that some of them are really, really stupid. And stupid people will download EXEs that promise to be naked Britney Spears porn videos all day long. And the only thing you can do is desperately try to protect them from themselves by blocking as much as possible, principle of least privilege, you know, block downloads, block websites, firewall the crap out of everything. And for a business, that makes sense. It makes a lot of sense. If you have a big business, I understand you need a security suite. You need monitoring. You need firewalls all over the place. You need system policies that restrict what people can do. That is a completely different ballgame. But we're talking about very different threat models. A person at home might have a savings account with fifty to hundred thousand dollars, not likely. But hey, you know, grandma might have a hundred grand or two hundred grand or whatever tucked away in savings that should get her through retirement, right? And the scammer might want to get that. Well, that's all fine and great. But that that's chump change. I don't have a video on it, but uh, there's a video out there that's really good about it. I can't remember the guy's name and I feel so bad about it, but it, it's this Target attack. There's a, an infamous attack on Target where they got deep into Target systems and captured millions of credit card entries um, through Target's own systems. And it was... It was a pretty wild hack. They had to actually breach multiple systems in, a, in, in order to get the thing um, planted and to start collecting. And then they had to, you know, they had to craft what they collected in a special way so that target systems wouldn't notice that credit cards were being sent back out. It's a real clever hack. The thing is, nobody is going to target my house. Nobody is going to go, hey, Let's get deeply embedded within Jody's systems to capture all the valuable information that he's fapping to, I mean, uh, 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 processing between his, his computers that he's not selling anything through. You know, there's, nobody's coming to my house to try and gather information from my systems. Nobody's going to try and infect one system so that they can then infect another system, so they can infect another system, and then put in a back door that shuttles out millions of credit cards I don't take. I'm not that interesting. They do not care. Therefore, that is not part of my personal threat model. My threat model does not include enterprise hackers that go for the big bucks. It includes scammers and it includes phishing emails, but it does not include the big boy hackers. Because even if the big boy hackers got in, they would quickly figure out that nothing I have is particularly valuable. Now, if I had something valuable, that might be different. Maybe, maybe I'm writing code and I'm contracting for the NSA. You know, maybe that, that would make me a much bigger target. Maybe then I would be worried about that. But 
it's become increasingly difficult over the years to perform technical attacks to chain... You, you have to... Some of the exploits I see are insane. You have to chain together all these different minor vulnerabilities to work your way into a system. It, it's absolutely bonkers. <clears throat> Long gone are the days where you can just go to a Windows 95 network or whatever, or, or Windows 2000 network, um, and go in and just plug in a computer and attempt to um, authenticate to it as an anonymous user and it just sort of coughs up everything that's that's on the machine. Like, it's just like, oh, hey, hey, anonymous user, well, that counts as an authenticated account. We'll let you in. Here's, like, all the basic stuff that, that that's shared, you know? So it, it, the door's open. Come right in. Come right in. Let's Let's do this thing. Yeah, that, that doesn't happen. You know, that's just not happening. So, I guess I don't really want to go much further with this. I think the main point has been made. Your threat model varies wildly depending on who you are, depending on what you do, depending on who is trying to come after you or who isn't trying to come after you. A big corpo... A little nerd down here with some source code for a three-letter agency and grandma that's sitting at home you know with her 200 grand in savings and some investment account and some 20 something that can't afford a home and has no money and a lot of student debt these people all have different threats and those threats you know while there may occasionally be some overlap for the most part it's it's all pretty darn different and people who spend all their time and money all these normies especially just normal human beings you know not institutional people not you know not big iron IT you know not somebody with a lot of government secrets on their machine but just normal people spend a ton of money on security products like Norton antivirus or whatever that they do not need that it just it, it just doesn't make any sense they don't need it uh, it doesn't do anything for them because, why? Because that's not protecting against the threat model that they actually face. And there are already other layers before that that protect them. And if they put an ad blocker on, there's even more. And the ad blocker does more to protect against their actual real life threat model than any antivirus software, any, any firewall, whatever, mail scanner, any of it. That doesn't mean there's no place for it. If you get a metric ton of phishing emails, chances are pretty good that you'd be willing to pay Norton 360 their little annual fee for the privilege of not having to delete 30 Viagra emails or, or 30, you have a business grant or um, this is a uh, name of large national bank uh, letting you know that your account will be closed if you don't click this scammer link and log into it. You know, maybe you would be willing to pay for not having to filter through your phishing emails yourself. I, I can understand that. Sometimes your time is worth more than hitting that delete button that many times, and not everybody is as fast at figuring out what is a scam and what's not as I am. I get that. Maybe you could use it. But for most people, it's unnecessary. It's a complete waste of money, a complete waste of time. You shouldn't even bother. Do not get security software for your computer. And you know what? If, if, you, if you're worried about security on your computer, at, at your house, you know, your, your teeny tiny business, whatever, if you're, and you're running Windows 10 or 11, Windows Defender's built in. Windows Defender's built in. And I know there are some antivirus articles that write like, Windows Defender scored the lowest. You know good and damn well that the people who wrote those articles are getting paid off by the other antivirus vendors that charge money for their product because Windows Defender otherwise is basically eating their lunch by being good enough and costing nothing. So how do we make a value proposition that you buy Norton Antivirus or McAfee or, or whatever instead of using the free thing that came with your system? Oh, well, it scores the lowest on this list. It scores the lowest on this list. It scores the lowest on this list. I find it highly suspicious that one of the biggest tech companies on earth somehow magically can't make a good antivirus yeah i don't think so pal so yeah if you're worried about it just don't ever turn windows defender off you know what 
that's fine. It, if that works for you, just do that. And it's already built in. It's already free. If you're on Linux, then Windows, Windows viruses don't work anyway. So what are you worried about? But Linux, you, you don't even have enough of a attack surface for anybody to care. And if you're on Mac OS, you can't run anything except what Apple blesses anyway without going through 100 hoops. So what are you worried about? You know, Mac OS, you're a toddler. And Linux, you're a, a freaking nerd that can't run anything. And on Windows, you can run everything. But the same company that makes it puts something in that makes it so you can't really run everything. And you can't even run a lot of things. So, yeah, th there's all these sandboxes with barriers on the sides that keep everybody from really having to worry about that stuff. Why are you worried about it? Stop worrying about it. Worry about the scammer that's trying to trick you into calling them. Worry about the scammer that's trying to send you a phishing email that says that your email address will be shut down if you don't click the link to update. You know, worry about that. You know, the link that you hover over and see that the link doesn't link to Microsoft.com or whatever, or but instead it links to eiu.co.br. <laughs> you get what I'm saying. So, yeah, anyway, that's enough for this one. I'm going to let it go from there. You, you, you get the gist. You know, you need to understand your own personal threat model before you worry about, oh, how can I be more secure? It doesn't matter if you don't know what you're securing against and how you would go about doing it. Thanks for listening. Like, comment, subscribe, blah, 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 blah. Take care. Thanks. And uh, you know what? Send me some money and I might make an operating system to replace all of them and make an even better sandbox that makes you more like an infant. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. Infant OS. Let's do it. Let's do it. Make Temple OS look like crap. Have a good one. A little bit of quick rolling shaming right now. Uh, the guy behind the guy on my right right now, not this guy, but that guy, is driving like absolute dog crap. I'm sure you've seen him weaving in and out. This is going to be very interesting when I go forward. So watch that guy right there and see what happens. For example, yep, see, that's not a good idea. Let's all shame the psycho. right there. Alright my friends, now that the rolling road rage has finally subsided,